Welcome to Pentecost Sunday's worship stream today here at Grace Communion Richardson. We are a group of people that desire, that seek to know Jesus and to make him known through worship, through family fellowship, and through neighborhood engagements or community outreach, all out of the compelling love of God that he shares with us in his son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of his spirit. You are welcome to Pentecost Sunday. If you have any prayer requests, please let us know, and we will pray with and for you. If you have any comments, don't hesitate to share those with us as well. You can see on the screen the address that you can send prayer requests to. And I say, welcome again. Pentecost simply means 50th, and it refers to the 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. 50 days after Easter. Now, I am excited to let you know that we are going to be resuming regular weekly Sunday in-person worship beginning next Sunday at our church location. And we're going to use the safety protocols that we've used uh, in the past for our in-person worship. Uh, we're going to make changes uh, as necessary or we'll let those be known as we go forward. But I'm excited about the, uh, the opportunity for us to be able to get together on a regular basis uh, in the fellowship and koinonia as safely as possible as we go forward. Last time I talked about the ascension of Jesus, his being taken up, and what that means for Christians and for all of humans. Today, we are going to look at what Pentecost is about. The gifting of the Holy Spirit. The birth of the church. The focus on our unity in diversity and the truth that all of us, no matter where we come from, no matter what our background may be, all of us, are included in the love and in the plan of God. We're going to be looking at this in the message today. Now, primarily to Grace Communion Richardson members and supporters, I want to say thank you for your continuous uh, spirit of generosity and your prayers, your support, the time and energy expended to share the gospel as well as your financial donations. Uh, for those of you out there who are moved to join in this gospel effort uh, by financially donating, you can see on the screen some of the ways that you can do so. Financial donations are tax deductible. They are very helpful and much appreciated. God bless. Now please join our praise team for a song and scripture reading from members and a special presentation by our children of grace. And after that, I'll come for the main message. Please stay with us. Oceans. Rise, my 
came, they were all together in one place. A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. 
utterly amazed, they asked. Aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in their native tongue? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia. Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome. Both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Somehow we made fun of them and said, hey, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. But this is that which was spoken, spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let us pray. Eternal Father, Son, and Spirit, thank you for the amazing and wonderful gift of your Spirit. The gift of your Spirit that we may have your presence with us throughout life. That reminds us that we are not alone, that you did not intend for us to live this life alone. The gift of your Spirit that burst the church that also reminds us that we do not have to do this life alone. We can do it with your spirit and with each other. And the gift of your spirit that reminds us that no matter what background we come from, no matter who we are and what we are like, that you include us in your love and in your plan. So thank you for reminding us of that. Thank you for your love that is expressed in such an amazing way. We are grateful, O oh God. And I thank you as I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So Pentecost, which means 50th, a reference to 50 days after Easter, after the resurrection of Jesus, reminds us of the meaning of the phrase, out of many, one. Uh, it is a phrase that refers to our unity in diversity. Uh, it's a phrase that we have in the Latin on our quarter coin, out of many, one. Now, why do we respect and care for others, especially those who are not like us? Should we? Our differences are best understood, friend, within the context of our similarities. Let me say that again. We best understand our differences from the standpoint, from the context of our similarities, not the other way around. And we are similar more than we are different. And God gave us these differences and similarities or similarities and differences as a gift that we may express and reflect His love, His majesty, His glory, His splendor. In the many ways that we are able to as a result of our differences and similarities. And Pentecost teaches us that God gave us these similarities and differences for this very purpose, to express the love of God in its various shades and levels. And not use these differences for division and for hate. So let's consider our shared humanity and unity in diversity in Jesus revealed and empowered by the gifting of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and the birthing, the inauguration of the church, empowered by the Spirit to model this expression of love, of care, and of concern with one another, even in our differences. Let's look at that. And before I go any further, I, I, I need to clarify my use of the words diverse and diversity. Now, I know that I've used these words quite frequently over the period of time that I've been with you. I do not use these words only within the context of race, of ethnicity, and of skin color. I use these terms in the broader sense, including the various ways that we are different. We are different in height, some are, some are shorter, some are taller. We are different in our socioeconomic standing. We are different in our eye color. Some of us have brown eyes, some have green, some have blue. We are different in our cultural upbringing. And when I say that, I don't just mean as a result of your ethnicity or skin color, but as a result of how you were brought up at home, the values that you were brought up in. We are different in all of these areas. We are different in the way that we dress. I'm wearing something a little bit different today. And so the differences go beyond just the skin color arguments or the ethnicity arguments or race arguments. We are different in the way that we think. My approach in thinking is different from that of my wife. And these are all, friends, gifts. These all reflect diversity that God has gifted us. And so that's what I mean when I use these terms. So have that in mind. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2. Two, for the story of Pentecost and see the three main events or the three main themes that I want to share today 
from the story of Pentecost. Now, let me say those three themes and then we flesh them out as we go. The first is that Pentecost is a story of God giving us the gift of his presence through the Holy Spirit's arrival. So God gave us his spirit. He gives his spirit to all humanity, available to all humanity. That's the first theme of Pentecost. The second is that God showcased the birth of his church, the inauguration of his church with a focus on our unity in diversity. This is another theme of Pentecost. And in that sense, the story of Pentecost is a story of the reversal of the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11. So in Genesis chapter 11, you see that the language confused the people being able to be united together. And so differences in language resulted in confusion and antagonism and a separation that occurred in the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11. You can read that at your own time. The story of Pentecost in Acts 2 reverses that and showcases a unity in diversity within the context of the birthing of the church, the inauguration of the church. That's the second theme. And then, of course, the third theme, flowing out of this uniting in diversity, flowing out of this birthing and inauguration of the church, is the truth, the reality, that we all are included, no matter who we are, what our backgrounds may be, no matter what we look like. We are all included in the love and plan of God for our lives. That's the third theme of Pentecost. So let's look at these three themes as we read the story. And you saw the many ways that it was depicted. This scripture has been depicted by our members in the video clip that you just saw. It's beautiful. Do not just be hung up in the differences in the ways that they appear in terms of attire, but also what the scripture words are saying. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And you have to remember that this is a Jewish festival. And so you have many people coming into Jerusalem as pilgrims to partake in this festival. But the disciples were together in one place. Verse 2, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. In verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other t- languages or tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, these are about 120 folks that were there. And so, Acts chapter 2 and verses 1 to 4, we see here the gifting of the Holy Spirit, which I say is the first theme of Pentecost. That God gives us His Spirit, right? And He gives us His Spirit to enable us and ensure that we understand His presence in our lives. That He is with us through His Spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit are with us. Jesus is with us. He says so Himself in His uh, uh, conversation with His disciples before His Passion. He said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I will come again through the Spirit. And so the Spirit is now here on the day of Pentecost. And it gives a visible indication of his presence. The Spirit gives visible indications. And these indications are that of a strong wind, flames like tongues of fire, 
and multilingual gifts that the disciples suddenly have as a result of the presence, the giving, the gifting of the Holy Spirit. And so in verses 1 to 4 in Acts chapter 2, this is where we, we have the Spirit being made available to all of us as humans as an inseparable connection between God and us. As the one, and we'll talk about the Spirit next time. The Spirit is the one who makes the difference. All of the difference. It is the Holy Spirit that makes that difference, not us. We cannot make the difference. You know, it's very popular to use the, word, the, the phrase, I want to make a difference. Well, we can really make a difference only through the Spirit. And the Spirit is here giving. Verses 5 to 12. We see some of the other themes coming into play. In verse 5, we are told that there were many Jews, uh, God-fearing Jews, who were now in Jerusalem, as I said earlier, on pilgrimage. He says, verse 5, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Now that's a, um, uh, an exaggerated way of saying there were people from all over, right, in Jerusalem for pilgrimage, for the festivals. Verse 6, when they heard the sound, that is the strong wind that indicated the presence of the Holy Spirit. They came together, this crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Because when the Spirit came and the visible manifestation of it like flames of tongues of fire rested on these uh, disciples and they were given the multilingual gift, the ability to speak and to be understood in many languages, they were praising God as they were uh, given this gift. And that's what was being heard in the various languages of these people who have come on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So they heard their own language being spoken. And now this is the first time the issue of difference on this scale is being directly focused on in Scripture. At the birth of the church, there is a recognition of difference in language. There is a recognition of difference in nation. There is a recognition of difference right at the birth of the church. There are seven. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? And then the Various places these folks came from are mentioned in verse 9. And then it concludes in verse 11. We hear them, that is disciples, declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. So that's what they were doing. They were declaring the wonders of God. Verse 12, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? That's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question for, 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 to ask. What does it mean? What are we witnessing here? What is this about? What's going on? What does this mean? So we see here, we are being introduced to the importance, the concept of our unity in diversity and everyone being included in the plan of God for humans. And this is taking center stage right here in this story. At the inauguration or the birthing of the church, it is taking center stage. And the people are asking, what does it mean? Of course, Peter later will speak to what it means. But essentially what it means, friend, is that Pentecost reminds us that God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
And God reminds us through this gifting of the Spirit that He is the one who has gifted us with our differences. And that these differences are united in Jesus through the gift of His Spirit. And that we are all included in His love and plan for humans, no matter what our backgrounds may be, and no matter where we come from. Verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 uh, disciples, who were now uh, beginning to be known as apostles, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. And then he goes on to share. And he shares that what is happening is that God is fulfilling his promise of sharing his spirit, gifting his spirit in verse 17 on all people, your sons and daughters, your young men, your old men, your servants, men and women, all. It doesn't leave anyone out. I'll pour out my spirit, verse 18, on all in those days. And they will prophesy. In other words, they will uh, share inspiration. Inspiration about who? About God in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. And then he concludes by saying in verse 21, And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. No one is excluded, friend. You're not excluded because you are short or tall. You're not excluded because you are a male or female. You're not excluded because your skin color is black or white. You're not excluded because you have more money or poor. You're not excluded because your eyes are green or brown. You're not excluded because you think differently than someone else. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, Peter says, will be saved. That's the story of Pentecost. It is a story of inclusion. It's a story of our unity in diversity. It's a story of the presence of God in our lives through His Spirit. That He will never leave nor forsake us. He is ever present with us through His Spirit. It's a story of all of us being part of the love and plan of God. Those are the themes of Pentecost. So that's the answer to what does it mean that the people were asking. It means that God's favor and gift of His Spirit is for everyone. It means that God's invitation and inclusion in the life and in the mission of love of His Son is for all. It means that God's desire for a love relationship through His Son and by the power of His Spirit is for all. It means that we all, no matter where we come from, no matter what our background, no matter what our differences may be, which are all gifts that God has given to us, they are meant to be shared so that we don't have to do this life alone, but with the Spirit and with each other. It means that no matter how different we may look or how many different backgrounds we come from, that His Son, His Spirit, His love, His grace, His reconciliation, His destiny for all of us unites all of us and makes meaning and gives purpose to our gifts of diversity. They are united in Jesus through the Spirit, that His church is to represent this truth and show the way in living out this truth of our unity in diversity and of the Spirit's presence and guidance through it all. The one, the Holy Spirit, who makes the difference. That's what it means. And in Revelation chapter 7, we see where God wants this to lead, to conclude, where God wants this to be realized. 
in Revelation chapter 7 and in verse 9, it says, After this, I looked, John, describing what he saw in a vision. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Verse 10, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Why? Because He is the God of all of these great multitudes that no one could count from every nation, from every tribe, from every people, from every language, made, transformed, made anew and transformed in Jesus. Sharing destiny together before the throne of God. Sharing life together before the throne of God. Verse 15, therefore, they, that is all of these people, are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence through the spirit. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That, friend, is the destiny that we share together, no matter where we come from, no matter what our backgrounds may be, no matter who we are. What's important is we are united in the love of God through His Spirit, and we share the love of God and His plan for all of us. So here in Revelation 7, is the destiny the church is to represent and proclaim. The presence of God in Jesus, the Lamb at the center of the throne, is our shelter and our unity. And He is the owner of our diversity, which represents or reflects His body, His glory, and His majesty. That's the story of Pentecost, friend. Out of many, one. Unity in diversity through the Holy Spirit, in the love of God and to the glory of God. So ask yourself today, friend, this day of Pentecost, are you doing life alone or are you doing it with the Spirit? Are you doing this life alone or are you doing it with others who are also doing life with the Spirit. And even if they do not look like you, are you doing life with them? Because that's how God intended for us to do life. I pray you do. I pray you want to if you are not. Reach out for help to do so or reach out for help to continue to grow in doing so. Invite Jesus and His Spirit into your life. That's what God calls us to, and that's what we are reminded of during this day of Pentecost. To live in the love and in the identity of Jesus together through his spirit, no matter where we come from. Amen. I look forward to seeing you next time as we continue to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to manifest his presence in our lives as we live together, love together, no matter what 
our backgrounds may be, what the differences that we have, that we use those as expressions of love, as compliments to each other, to the glory of God. And as we seek to know Jesus and to make Him known through loving relationships, through hope and through faith, in worship together, in family fellowship and in neighborhood engagements, or out and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday. But now, let's join our praise team for a song. And God willing, we'll see you next Sunday. God bless. invite you to a zoom discussion after this message the ID is on the screen uh, if you need to to call using the phone the phone number is on your screen as well if you are watching on Facebook the link that you can click on to join zoom is in the description if you are watching on our website the link is on top of the video I look forward to to meeting you uh, on zoom for discussion and for fellowship God bless